This is going to be uh, day nine, actually, of the Teach Thought Reflective Teacher Challenge. I'm going to skip day eight. I'm going to do it tomorrow because day eight I'm supposed to uh, look at my desk drawer and talk about what I see and existentially infer things about something from that, which, okay, that, that one seems kind of silly to me, but it's already like nine o'clock at night. I'm already at home. I'm not going to drive back to school just so I can turn a camera on my desk drawer. So I'll do that tomorrow. So I'm going to do day nine. This one, uh, my biggest accomplishment as a teacher that no one knows about, and then in parentheses, or cares about, which, uh, honestly could be so many things for so many teachers because uh, there, there's way, I don't know, like this one, at first I was kind of like, oh, I shouldn't talk about it, like things, like I shouldn't try to even come up with something, I should like try and be nice and humble, nice and subdued, and I was thinking about it and really like, I think that's a problem with our teaching profession is that so many of us are very humble, so many of us are very like, not like purposefully, but kind of secretive about the awesomeness that we bring to our classroom. And as a result, that leaves way too many non-teachers out there just spouting off all kinds of not truths about what education is and what it is that we do. And as teachers, if we don't start telling our stories, if we don't start shouting boastfully from the mountaintops what it is that we do in our classroom, then other people are going to fill in those gaps for us and it will not be accurate and it will be definitely detrimental to our profession. I've already seen it in my short seven years of teaching that just the, the public opinion of educators just slide down and it just, oh, it, it makes me crazy. So I'm doing it. I'm going after it. Biggest accomplishment. This one, this one's rough, uh, and, and there's a good moral in this one. Uh, I'm gonna uh, try to try to. I'm gonna use some pseudonyms and try to keep it nice and androgynous. So we'll see if I can avoid all those gender biasing <laughs> pronouns, or maybe I'll just switch with he this time, she that time, he this time, she that time. What are you? They is that the appropriate pronoun for? other gender, I don't know, I don't I don't want to get into that in this vlog, I could do a whole nother vlog on gender type things and make all the sociology peeps probably super happy, but this is a story about a student I had, this was my very first year teaching a student named Pat, not really named Pat, but that's a pseudonym I'm using, now Pat, I'd known Pat for several years before that, uh, personally, like uh, sort of a family friend type thing. Um, and, and Pat came from a pretty broken family, uh, Pat's mom and dad, uh, I don't want to give away too much because you'll know who Pat really is, but, uh, like, just not, the things were not going well, uh, they're not together anymore, Pat's mom and dad, and Pat, being the oldest, uh, took the brunt of it, and he was having a really rough time, and I had Pat as a sophomore, first year teaching, um, he wasn't doing very well, you could tell that he was on and off, heavy into drugs, uh, just underachieving, really smart kid, and really nice kid, and just got, as the year progressed, just got, like, worse and worse and worse until uh, Pat wanted to, I can't remember if I said he or she, so I'll just throw out a she, until she wanted to, like, withdraw from school, and he wanted to do some online schooling. That's what Pat, the, the he, she, they, Pat, androgynous person wanted to do. And uh, I... Yeah, usually when our kids withdraw after achieving very low and then go into an online school, they end up dropping out of high school altogether and not just not finishing, or they end up coming back to us years later with just nothing to show for their efforts. So we really try to make that not happen. Pat's parents were, well, Pat's mom really was very, no, you're not doing that. You're going to stay in school. You've got great teachers. You know, they're going to reach you. And it got to the point where Pat, and we would have activities and some of them were like good activities, some were really fun, and he, and Pat would just sit there and just like not even like disruptively, not even really like overtly disrespectfully, just I'd be like, Pat, come on, I need you to get to work. And Pat would be like, nah, it's, it's fine. And I mean, I threw every tool I had in the toolkit at him, which it was my first year, so it was mostly like trying to reason with them or yelling at them is really, I think, all I had going for me then. But just, you know, everything, and no matter what I said, no matter how much I pleaded, begged, yelled, threatened, anything, just, nah, it's, it's fine, I'm 
just I'm not gonna do it. To the point, I mean, I I've, I ended up like throwing my throwing Pat throwing her out of class a few times. Yeah, I'll switch to her, so do he. And it threw Pat out of class a few times. Like, look, Pat, you, you can't just sit here and do nothing. That kills my classroom environment. Other kids see that. Like, and, and even when I sent Pat out of the room, Pat was all just like, okay, whatever. It's it's cool, man. Just it's it's fine. Like, and and it ended up. I mean, you can see where the story's going. It just kept declining. Pat started missing more and more school. And eventually, Pat withdrew. Uh, for, you know, online school was the reason on the withdrawal form, and I didn't see Pat again for several years. And I know this is supposed to be an accomplishment, and it was, I felt like such a failure. Like, here was a kid that I knew personally that I could see slipping, I could see struggling, and, like, everything I did just had no, no bearing, no effect, just as downward, just awful spiral and I felt terrible just terrible about it and until I ran into Reese who was another graduate from Mount Vernon High School ran into Reese and obviously not actually named Reese but I ran into Reese uh, actually um, casually out and I've ran into Pat a few times since uh, Pat looks great it cleaned up has a fiance has children I mean you know got life together, looking good, and, and I saw Reese, and Reese, we were just chatting about, you know, catching up, as uh, Reese was a student, uh, senior, during, like, some, I never had Reese in class, but, you know, we, we, you know, knew of each other, and it was kind of cool, but talking with, that was too rambly, that, talking with Reese anyway, get on point, Patterson, talking with Reese, and Reese just threw at me, like, just out of nowhere, we're just talking about this and that, and Reese goes, thank you for saving Pat. Thank you for saving Pat's life. And that's crazy. Like, that's... That's... A, that's just... Like, I don't know. There could be a fair amount of hyperbole. You know how kids are these days. And you're sort of like, oh, yeah, everything's got to be, you know, the extreme. or But even, like... Like, this was a student that I just felt so ineffective with and felt like I just never got anywhere... And then somehow, like, I'm getting credit later for, like, really, like, a remarkable feat. And so that's, I mean, partially, it feels good to talk about because that's a really, like, cool story. And it's a really, like, emotionally cathartic story for me. But it's also, like, I think it's a good message for teachers, especially, I know a lot of, like, newer teachers in the profession get really frustrated and really bogged down and just feel really ineffective. But... You never know what seeds you're planting for later in your students' lives. Like, you, even if you don't see tangible benefits now, they'll remember things you did. They'll remember how you care for them. They'll remember how you, like, reach for them. They'll remember how you try for them down the line. And it'll, it'll really, like, you, you just, you, you can never see the effect you end up having as those seeds grow and develop and mature later on, you know, when they finally have breached the other side of the teenage haze and can think about things again. So, I mean, there's, that's, that's easily my biggest accomplishment over everything else. It's, it's, it's crazy, but it's also, I think, a good story that should be told, if nothing else, so you know that don't give up. Because as a teacher, what you do matters. Thanks for watching.